of handmade business can be tough when trying to monetize what you love. We've got truth bombs and motivation to to help you find your way through passion to profit. Let's start today, 'cause the world needs what you create. Tune in right now; it's your shot to learn. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to How to Be a Handmade Boss. It still sounds really weird <laughs> saying that. I am loving doing these podcasts though because it's so conversational, and I just love chatting to you guys, even though you can't necessarily chat back to me. But I would love to hear hear from you if you let me know through Instagram DM. That's kind of where I'm spending most of my time these days. So if you've loved the podcast, if you found it helpful. Let me know, and also leave a cheeky little review because that also helps the podcast be found and to reach more people, which we want to do. We want to help more makers, right? So today, I wanted to talk to you about taking the leap from nine to five to running your own business. So this, for me, was my absolute goal from when I started my shop in 2015 to 2016, when I actually went full time, and it was April the 17th, <laughs> 2016, which is the day I left my nine to five job. So if you've read my book, How to Be a Handmade Boss, which this, this podcast is kind of named. Named after you will know a little bit more about my sort of journey with my nine to five. So probably a bit a bit like you. When I was at school, I kind of bounced around in terms of what I wanted to do. Looking back now, I can really see that the entrepreneurial streak was there the whole time. But I just feel like you know when I was at school, and you know I, I was born in 1992, so you can imagine the kind of schooling that I had, where it's very much like. If you're good at science, you're gonna grow up and do something in science. If you're good at art, you're gonna grow up and do something in art. Although not necessarily with art, because I was always told that there was no jobs and art was nice, but it wasn't something that would pay the bills, right? And I was always really good at art, and I was always really good at science, right? Those were my two things that I loved. So. I went back and forth between doing something sciencey, I wasn't quite sure what, and doing something with my creative side. I also did do IT and business studies as well, which makes me laugh because I actually got a D in business studies at school. That was in a GCSE level, and I just did. I mean, the lessons were very much like I think anyone who is watching that might have done some kind of degree knows that. What they teach you in the classroom when it comes to business stuff is not actually what happens when you're out on the field and actually doing it, and that was the case with me, right? I did like the spreadsheets, but I just didn't understand why we had to sit and write a 45-page business plan when all you needed to know could have been fitted on like two or three pages.、Um, and that's probably why I got the D because I just didn't really get it. Anyway, I I digress. So for me, I was very much like. I have to go and do something in something that I am good at, right? And I applied to an arts kind of college to learn photography. I was two points off of getting in, and there was no way that I could make up the points. So instead, I flopped back to the science side of things, and I went and studied forensic science. Which, if you didn't know. That was what I studied at college,、um, and I realised like six months in, it was not for me. However, the people around me at the at the time were very much like, if you started it, you got to finish it. At the time, I had a part time job, which was actually at Wil Wilkinson's Hardware Stores, which if you're in the UK,、um, I think they've actually gone bust now. I'm not I'm not sure, but. It was there, and I hated this job. I worked on the tills, and literally for seven hours a, a, a day on a Saturday, that was my job: was just taking money, sorting out change, speaking to people. Da, da, da. And basically, it was either I quit this college course、um, and I worked full time at, at that job, which I didn't like, or and these these are genuinely the options that I thought were available to me. Or I carried on as I as I was, and I was having fun at college. I, you know, college for me was like a three day a week endeavor. I got my money from my little job, and I was okay with life. So that's what I did. And 
I think probably a lot of you out there can resonate with that on some level where you are not pushed almost, but you're almost kind of, I don't know, pigeonholed into doing this thing. And for me, it was straight after college. I was like, I don't want to do this thing. Like forensic science is not really for me. Uh, interesting as it as it is, um, it just wasn't my bag. I, I was good at it, but it just wasn't my bag. So incidentally, what ended up happening was after college, there was this epic void in my life where I was like, okay, I need to, I need to figure this out. Right. And I started working at a kind of mid-level high street jewelers. It was the first like real job for want of a better word that I had. And I kind of enjoyed it. Um, The people around me were a little bit clicky and all that sort of stuff. But all of this is really to say that I think the urge and the want for me to do entrepreneurial things has been present very early in my life. But I think, you know, going through school in the in the in the nineties, the early noughties, we we were very much taught that you know that's that's nice and that's very cute, but that's not going to pay the bills. And I would love to hear from you guys if you are the same, um, you know, and and if you were sort of told the same things, um, it would be really interesting to hear from you. But what I found is that I was always wanting to have my own business. It was always either a photography business, a wedding dress shop at one point, a little gift shop. Like it was always my own business and to be in charge of my own time that I craved for. Fast forward to 2015 and I was working in a job that by that point I had actually spent thousands to study in. So as well as studying forensic science, I also studied gemology um, and also like diamond grading and all that kind of stuff where you are looking at gems that no one knows what the what on earth they are, telling you what they are, grading them, valuing them, all that sort of stuff. And again, I was I was kind of ushered, <laughs> not pushed, ushered into doing that as well, right? And it really just it just wasn't my thing. And I think a bit like you guys maybe listening is that maybe you thought, hey, you know, when I've got my diploma, degree, uh, course, work, whatever done, I'm going to feel a different way about this. And I'm going to actually want to do this thing. And I'm going to actually really enjoy this job. And I think it's very much along the same lines as I'll be happy when, you know, I think we've, we've all been there where, we say to ourselves, I'll be happy when I make X amount, when I can go full-time in my Etsy shop, when, when, when. And unfortunately with that is that a lot of the time um, you can be happy right now just by deciding that you're not gonna let the small stuff get you down anymore. And yes, we all have goals and yes, we have things that we wanna get to and that's great. But is it a reason to be fundamentally unhappy until you get that thing? No, it's not right? So for me, that was very much my beginning stages, really. Um, And I guess I spent the first 10, 12 years of my working life in jobs that I had this deep kind of fire in my belly that was, I want to be in charge of my own time. I really want this self-employed lifestyle. I want to have the business. Like I really want to have something that's mine, that I am in control of, that, uh, yeah, I just have that innate need to have that in my life, right? So when it came to starting my Etsy shop, my handmade jewelry business, and things really started to kick off in terms of sales, in terms of in of income, it then became very apparent that that was a possibility and it was amazing. And I tell the story all the time of the first Christmas that I had with my Etsy shop and with my own website. I made like triple um, my monthly income and in one month and I was, and it was insane. And I was thinking, oh my God, like what have I been doing this whole time? And it felt so aligned, it felt so right. And I think really that does feed into, I get this question a lot and it's, how do I know that I'm ready to take the leap? Like, how do I know if my Etsy shop's gonna work, continue to work, get those sales in every single month in order to cover things from my part-time job, full-time job? And I think one thing that is really important 
is to have that fundamental feeling of is this right? Like, does this feel aligned for me? Is this a lifestyle that I want? Because sometimes people do take the leap and they fundamentally miss the structure. And, you know, those kind of first few months when you are going full-time in your business, it can be very chaotic in your life and in your mind. (laughs) Um, So that is definitely one thing to consider, I'd say. So when I finally made the decision that that is what I wanted, I wanted to go full time and it was was a very easy decision because the job that I was in, the last employee job that I had, um, I mean, I went full time in 2016. So what's that at this point, eight years ago. And I hated the, the job. I had trained for this job. I thought that I would be happy when I got this job. And within like, well, to be honest, two weeks, I despised it and I hated it. And I wanted to be there as little time as I could. Um, and I I tell the story all the time about um, how it affected my health, um, how my body was kind of saying no, but I was pushing myself and pushing myself. The commute each way was ridiculous. Um, and it was really this like desperate, horrible, very low place. I don't like to throw the word depression around, but I do think now looking back that that might have played a role in it. And yeah, it was just not a very good place to be in. So obviously when the idea of a handmade jewelry Etsy shop and it really started to work, obviously there was that kind of glimmer there. But as you can imagine, it is not always rainbows and unicorns. It's not always consistent sales every single month. It's not always, um, you know, looking at things and, uh, you know, everything's going to be great because there's very much the ups and downs still there is still panics, there is still new level, new devil, which I will do a whole episode about about that. Um, There is a lot involved there. And again, that is one thing that I would say is don't expect when you do take the leap for everything to fall into place as if you've imagined it from like a movie screen, because sometimes it won't, right? So fast forward to about May of 2016, I handed in my notice. I distinctly remember kind of being very shaky and walking up the stairs to my boss's office and just, you know, it was was one of those where my feet didn't want to move, but I was making them move. And I marched upstairs and I sat down in the chair and was like, have you, have you got a mo? And obviously I was already in the office chair in his office. And he was like, yeah, 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 fine, whatever. Um, and I said, look, I just want to hand in my notice. Um, yeah, thank you. And I put the thing down on the desk. Like I actually did it the old fashioned way and like wrote a letter out, printed it off, put it in an envelope, put it on his desk. I was like, yeah, okay then, bye then. And literally gave no <laughs> um, chance for him to talk to me about it or anything like that. And at the time I didn't tell anybody about my business. Um, I, I told no one, I because I was so afraid that, they would judge me. I was so afraid that if it didn't work out, would they be like, oh, look at her trying to build a business and it didn't work out. Oh. And yeah, I ended up obviously, as you know, the story, because I'm here now talking, talking to you on how to be a handmade boss podcast. It worked and I managed to um, leave my job. And for the first couple of months, it was really scary. It was like, it was a lot of pressure. But as time went on, I got to know, you know, because I think with a business, it's a living, breathing being almost. It has its ups and downs. It has its waves and its crests and its crashes. It can be very, it's not a linear journey. Okay. And and again, that is another thing to consider. I think people think, right, well, on average over the last three to six months, I've made um, 2000 pounds in my, in my Etsy shop. Therefore I can expect 2000 pounds a month. And that's not how it works, especially around uh, Christmas times, busy times, you are going to see massive peaks, but also in quiet times, you are going to see massive troughs as well, massive dips. And, you know, a lot of people account for that. A lot a lot of people will save the extra that they've made during like Q4, Christmas time, uh, ready for Q1 when things can be quite quiet. And I mean, there's a lot of like nuances within that, that it really does depend on the products that you sell, um, the all the audience that you have, how active you are in you know driving your own traffic to your shop um, wherever that is whether that's on Etsy your own website 
And that is another thing that I think people do panic about you know they they leave their job then they think right that's it I'm 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 so I'm expecting this number in my head and if I don't reach that something is wrong I think it's just all about having that willingness and openness to be able to look at it with a bit of curiosity and actually think okay well I didn't quite reach the 2k mark but that's okay. There's got to be reasons for it. And that is really, to be honest with you, where the HBSA, which is the first time I've like mentioned it on this podcast, but the the HBSA is, is the Handmade Bosses Success Academy. And it is my signature course really to get you from zero to consistent five figure months on Etsy and beyond. So that's where that really shines because we have the community, we have the monthly coaching calls with me. We have the course obviously as well, but it's just a great place to be like, hey, am I overreacting here? Like, am I doing something wrong? Do I need feedback here? Um, and that's really where that shines. And that is something that I did did not have. And that is one of my biggest regrets is that I had no support throughout this entire like journey of the transition from not having a business to having a business to having a thriving business and then to having a thriving business that sustained me instead of a nine to five job. And I had no one really around me that understood that no one really got why I wanted to do this. Everybody around me and still is really to this day, apart from you guys, of course, are employed people who are very kind of happy in their jobs. And that's great. You know, there are, there are two different types of people. And I think uh, some are really well suited to the employed life and, you know, having someone to answer to and none of the stress and pressure. And then there's others who perhaps aren't as attuned into being employed and are people who are like, almost like rebellious, I I, I always like to think. And, And I definitely fall under that wing, um, where I am someone who, if someone says, okay, let's do this, this and this, I'm like, well, yeah, we could do it that way or we could do it this way. And as you can imagine, that did cause some, uh, shall we say, issues in the employed life. (laughs) Um, But yeah, that is one of my biggest regrets really, is just not having a place, like a hub to go to where I could talk this out and really talk it out with people who actually understood the whole journey and the whole process, right? So actually making the leap in April 2016 of my business full time, I basically went into it thinking that I needed to overwork. You know, it was almost like this need to, I need to work hard for every pound or dollar that I get. Okay. And it was, and it was a very weird thing. And it was not something, you know, since then I have studied money mindset. I have studied business mindset, the whole psychology of a business owner extensively. And I now know that this is this whole thing of, we get told very, very young, you need to work hard in order to get anywhere in life. You need to work hard to earn money. You need to just, and it's very much like busy equals good. And that is my life or that was my life when I left my job. So I left a nine to five and instead hopped into a 24 hours a day. And that was the first year really. And I burnt out big time. Um, Yes, my business grew, but it was at the expense of my own mental health. And I'm really open and honest on this podcast about mental health, about the fact that when you start a business and you scale it, it is so much more than just a business, just a financial enterprise. It is a self-discovery journey. And it really is because not only are you discovering more about you, your values, what you like, you're also discovering things like how you like to work. Are you a night owl? Are you an early morning person? Even like how your cycle, if you get one, affects it as well. And just really, it makes you understand and appreciate the little subtleties of your body and your mind and what they're trying to tell you because you have to be in tune because if you're not the next day you could wake up burnt out and not able to do anything which has certainly happened to me on multiple occasions so yeah as you can imagine it was a very like up and down time I was so happy that I was out of my job but 
it was like every week I was battling to get products made. I was battling to get products listed and battling to get everything done, you know, <laughs> um, get the the Etsy shop sorted, um, get the website sorted. I had wholesale orders as well, which I was grateful for. And it's a thing that I do teach my students as well. But then what happens when you have a thriving Etsy shop, when you have a really fantastic website bringing you in orders and like a couple of really fantastic, like high quantity wholesale clients, what happens? Well, you have to fulfill them. You have to do the thing. And that was definitely something that I struggled with. And I I really struggled with not only the marketing side and getting orders in, but also fulfilling them in time, making sure that the quality was good. And, and yeah, I did make some major mistakes and they are ones that I can talk about on other episodes if you like. <laughs> but it was one of those things where I think everyone does when they leave their nine to five and it was, I have to work really hard and I have to work all the time and I can't have any time off because I gave up that privilege when I left I left my job. It's a real mindset shift and I would implore anyone who is, who is going through the journey right now, maybe you've just quit your job or maybe you are like weeks or months away from actually doing it, to keep your mindset in check question those thoughts that are running through your head. So for me, it was, why do I feel like I need to work on a Sunday morning? Like, why, why do I feel like that? And it would usually stem from a conversation in my head, such as, well, you know, you've left your job and really, ideally, you need to get X amount in this month to cover this, this and this. And if you want to grow, you have to bring this in. And then I would then be like, okay, that's that's all great. So why can I not do that? and have a Sunday morning off, you know? And and I would also say to take baby steps with this as well. Don't expect to go from working 80 hours a week one week to like, I don't know, four hours the next week because it won't happen and your body and your mind will rebel against it. So yeah, basically this whole episode, I really want to take the shine off a little bit of making the leap into running your nine to five and kind of really pull back the curtains and tell you exactly what it's like. However, and this is a big however, it is the most wonderful thing that I have ever done in my life. Apart from getting married, of course, and my husband will kill me if he heard me say that. But honestly, it was the biggest act of self-care that I could have ever given given myself. It was the best gift that I could have ever given myself. It was the best thing that I ever did for myself. Not only did it allow me this financial freedom that I have enjoyed and do enjoy to this very day, but it is also something that has enabled me to be in charge of my own time. You know, if I want to go and see an afternoon movie, I can. And if I want to go and take myself out for lunch, just for the hell of it, I will. And I love that. I I just love the idea of being able to do that. Has it come with some amazing life lessons as well? Yes. And I would argue that that is much more valuable than the money that that it's given me. And and I, you know, I won't lie to you, like the money that it has given us has been insane. It has helped us to pay for a wedding. Uh, In fact, it paid for half of the wedding so obviously me and my other half went halves and it also put the down payment on our on our house and it has continued to help us to pay the mortgage on that on that house and this is not just oh I bought myself a new car or I bought a designer handbag like this is life-changing stuff you know and without having ever made that leap both of those things would not have happened because I was limiting myself in terms of monthly income in terms of time and yes there was a few wobbles in terms of um, you know mindset stuff right in the beginning there when I first made that leap but it was so needed it was so worth it and I think if it really feels right to you if it's really the thing that you are desperate to do that you really 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 want to do then I would say go for it 
aim for it. Make that your goal. I know that a lot of people will be like, okay, Steph, like fi- financials wise, how did you work it out? It's really hard for me to comment on personal financial situations, really, because they are so different. Everyone is so different. Um, but for me, what I did was if I could cover 80% of my bills. Now that's not like going out for dinner, buying yourself a new pair of, I don't know, shoes or whatever. That is just the bare bones. If I could cover 80% of my bare bones bills um, with me running my Etsy shop on the side of my job, then theoretically, if I went full time in it, I'd be putting more time into the business. Um, and therefore, I'd be making a lot more than 100% of my bills because obviously if you're putting, I don't know, six hours a week into it and making 80% of enough to cover your bills, then if you put 24 hours a week, you're, you're, you're gonna get more than that, right? And that's kind of how I've always looked at it is that, you know, and and I, I would say as well, like reduce expenses down as much as you can to just relieve that pressure. It's not gonna be forever. It's not something that, you know, you have to stop having your Starbucks every week forever, but it's just enough to take that pressure off of you while you are getting your budding business off of the ground. And yeah, that's really the, the general rule of thumb. Obviously, if that doesn't work for you, then, you know, really sit down and kind of work it out um, what that would mean for you in terms of fi- financials. But yes, I just, I do really think that if that is something that deep down you want to do, then it is 100% worth it. Um, and I also think as well, if you're listening to this and going, oh, that's just too much, and then, then that's fine. Like there's nothing wrong with you running your business on the side and working part-time. You know, I'm not saying everybody listening to this hates their job to the point where they want to leave, but certainly the same applies um, depending on if you want to cut your hours down at your job or or increase your hours spent in your shop or even if you don't have a job and you're like you know I want to make this my full-time gig then do the same steps realize the same things that you know it will happen you will have the mindset blocks you will have the ups and the downs and all that kind of thing so what I will say is that if you are looking to increase your Etsy sales okay if you are thinking you know what Steph this sounds really good. I'm ready to make that life-changing decision that um, this is going to be my goal and this is what I want to get to. Then I have a really fantastic free training for you. It's at handmadebosses.com forward slash conversion. The link will be in the show notes. And it's basically how to make more Etsy sales within seven days. Um, And I also talk about the algorithm on Etsy, your conversion rate, how to increase that. And it's just a really fantastic training if you are like, I want to bump some things up. It's about 90 minutes and it might just be the most important 90 minutes that you've ever spent (laughs) time-wise on your business, okay? So I would say definitely go and watch that. Also, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for getting to episode two. I am going to be recording much, much more of these and I really enjoyed having the conversation with you and kind of not having that time limit, you know, not having that YouTube, um, you know, people are only going to stick with you for eight minutes or 10 minutes. So make it quick, make it snappy, make it engaging with the B-roll and the zooming and all that kind of stuff. I really like just sitting down and just talking to you like you're sat in front of me and we're having a coffee. (laughs) I would also love it if you would follow or subscribe. I'm not quite sure what the lingo is where you are listening to this, but I would love it if you would consider. Thank you so much for tuning into How To Be A Handmade Boss. And if you're eager to boost your Etsy sales within just seven days, then be sure to join my most popular free training at handmadebosses.com forward slash conversion. You can also find the link in the show notes as well. Keep an eye out for our next episode where we'll be continuing our journey towards handmade business success together. And until then, keep crafting and stay inspired because the world really does need those special creations that only you can make.